Hi everyone, Andrew here. Today I would like to teach you how to find the domain, vertical asymptotes, and horizontal asymptotes of a rational function. Let's first focus on the domain. So when you ask, when you're going to find the domain, you want to ask yourself a question, all right? What values of x am I allowed to plug in to this function such that it doesn't give me a wacky result, okay? So what I'm thinking is, is there any limitations or restrictions on the value of x when I plug it into this part of the function? Don't worry about the fractional part yet, just this. Well, not really, right? I mean, you could plug in any value you want for x, and you can always subtract one from it. So right now, as I look at this function, just the bottom part, there really is no restriction at the moment. However, when I look at this function as a whole now, I realize that there is a certain number I'm not allowed to plug into a denominator of a fraction. What number is that? Well, that would be zero, right? If this denominator somehow becomes zero, ooh, that's a problem because you cannot divide zero into the numerator. So my question is, what value of x gives an overall value of zero in the denominator? You might say, oh, that's easy, it's positive one. Yes, this one's nice and easy. However, if the problem gets a little harder, what you wanna do is just take that denominator, set it equal to zero, and to solve, all right? Now this method might not work all of the time because depending upon the types of functions you have, we might have to factor things, all right? But this is the general idea, and I'm gonna do probably tens and tens of problems on this topic. So I will definitely go through all the needed examples. Check out the playlist. Now, uh, in this particular case then, uh, x cannot be equal to one for this function, and therefore I now have my domain, right? So let's just write it out kind of in words. The domain here is going to be equal to, you can say something like all real numbers, all right, except, except for positive one. That's fine. If you had to have it in a certain notation, you could always, you know, put it into interval notation and whatnot, but that's the general gist. Now, let's take a look at then the, uh, which one should we do next? Why don't we take a look at the vertical asymptotes? So when finding the vertical asymptotes, what you want to do is you want to determine the value of x that will give an undefined result for this function. Now we kind of already talked about that actually with doing the domain, right? So we will be able to identify easily now the vertical asymptote, all right? The vertical asymptote will be this equation over here, all right? This is the equation now of the vertical asymptote, the vertical asymptote. It's basically the value um, of x that will give an undefined result to the function, all right? And this is then the equation. So that's the vertical asymptote. So you kind of kill two birds with one stone. Or as I like to say, have two desserts in one sitting. I just made that up actually, I kinda like it. It's a lot better than saying killing two birds with one stone, right? Anyway, all right, back to back to, uh, back to to math. So, um, that's the vertical asymptote. Next is going to be the horizontal now, asymptotes. So what do we need to do here when we're talking about horizontal asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, right? Horizontal asymptotes. What we need to do is we need to consider now whether the function is known as top heavy, equal, or bottom heavy. Okay. Now what you want to do when you're looking at your function is you want to uh, find the highest power of x. Now this one's kind of simple because there really is only one x. All right. And it's in the denominator. So this would be just considered a bottom heavy rational function. Um, if you had another x term on the top and it was, they were both to the first power, that would be an example of an equally heavy. And if you had, let's say the x and you had squared on the top now, this would be a top heavy because the power of x, your variable is greater in the numerator on the top, AKA, um, you know, than the bottom, all right? Uh, so this one is a bottom heavy function. Now this one's easy. Anytime you have a bottom heavy function, you're always going to have the horizontal asymptote, the horizontal asymptote equal to zero, okay? What you wanna think about now is you need to think about what happens at the limit. What happens at the limit when x goes to infinity? You know, when x becomes infinitely large, right, this denominator becomes infinitely large, right, and therefore the whole thing is going to go to zero, right? If you take four and you divide it by a very, 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 very large number, this thing is going to be zero or approaching zero, right? Now that's how you find the horizontal asymptote, okay? So in this particular case, 
the y value, the y will become zero when x becomes infinitely large, both in the positive and the negative direction. It doesn't matter in this case. All right. So this right here, let me just clean this up a little bit. The horizontal asymptote will be y equaling zero. So you have your domain, your vertical asymptote, and your horizontal asymptote. Why don't we graph this bad boy and let's see what we get. So four divided by open parentheses, x minus one, x minus one, close the parentheses and hit graph. And look, <clears throat> this is kind of what we were saying, right? What we were saying was we have a horizontal asymptote right here. That's y equaling zero. And look, we said that our vertical asymptote was going to be somewhere around x equaling one. OMG, ness, right? X equals positive one. And there you go. There you have it. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. I do hope this video helps. And if it did, like, subscribe. Maybe you can tell some of your classmates. We love to help more people. We love all the support you've been giving us. Thank you so, so very much. None of this would be possible without your love and affection and support. So we really do appreciate it. And uh, check out some more of our content because we don't only have mathematics, but we have physics and chemistry as well. We have a whole lot of stuff coming. Check us out.